وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صلِّ على محمدٍ وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمدٍ وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار we we'll begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We we'll praise Him and we we'll ask His help and we seek His forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil inside us and from the evil consequences of our bad actions. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads to go astray, no one can guide. I testify that there is no God to be worshipped but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our master and our teacher. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Oh, praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, 
Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah for another day in our life, another blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, if I begin the khutbah by asking you a few questions, how much of your day do you find yourself consumed by work-related responsibilities and tasks? How much time do you spend thinking about your future career? And if you are a student, what percent would you say is currently occupied by schoolwork? Like assignments, you know, home uh, school, uh, school work, you know, exams. And how much do you actually spend from your mental energy on your social life and your relationships? How much time, you know, do you think about all the matters and all the affairs, your family relationships, you know, friends relationships, everything that you do in life, your work, your study, your school. And have you ever felt that after all these things that we're taking care of, all of these things that are, we are consumed with, have you ever felt that there is no room in your heart for anything else? I mean, everything and anything else, including Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look at human beings, brothers and sisters, we see that every single one of us is preoccupied with something in this life. We call these things attachment. And when you get attached to something, you fall in love with it. When you get attached to something, it becomes a need for you. You tell yourself, I can't live without this. I can't survive without that thing. We keep telling ourselves, you know, if that thing is lost, it can cause a absolute devastation for me and my life. And these attachments, brothers and sisters, can be wealth, can be belongings, can be idea, can be other people. Can be physical pleasure, can be a drug, can be, you know, uh, status symbols, can be physical appearance, beauty, beautification, the way that you dress, the way that you view yourself, the way others view you, your career, your job title. We become consumed with all of these things and sometimes you wonder, does my heart have a room for all that? In one of the most beautiful verses and the most companion verses in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hadid, verse number 20, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهو وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Surah Al-Hadid, verse 20. Again, in one of the most compelling verses in the Quran, Allah says, "Know that the life of this world. اعلموا أن من الحياة الدنيا لعب وله. Here's the ayah. Know that the life of this world." is nothing but a play, entertainment, beautification, boasting, increase in life, increase in wealth and in children. If you look at the sequence of the words in this verse, they are not random. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically meant to put it in that order because they represent different stages of our life from childhood until old age. You come out of the womb a couple of months later, all you're thinking about is play. My little one does nothing but play. He eats and drinks, sometimes makes his diaper a little bit heavier, but that's what he does, play, play, play. 
We get a little bit older, and then entertainment happens, amusement. Oh, there's something called movies, Disney Plus, cartoon movies, you know, the video games, the, all these things that consume us at a certain age of our lives. And then you get a little bit older, you go to college, for example, or before college, even the high school, you know, Zena, beautification. You worry too much about the way you look like. And I'm sure all of you in high school, freshmen in college, in the first couple of years of college, all you were thinking about, or most of the things you're thinking about is the way that you look, the brand name. What my friends gonna say about me? You get a little bit older, and then tafakhur happens, boasting. Boasting about yourself, about your degree, about the school that you went to, about your job title. That's what we're boasting about. About how big your car is, and how big the size of your house is. And then takathur. An increase in wealth and in children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this is what you think life is, right? But I think of life, all of these things, the play, the games, the, the, the entertainment, the boasting, the increase, all of these things in life are like rain. A rain that came down that brought some vegetation. You know, the farmers were impressed of how beautiful it looked. But that plant, this vegetation didn't last for long. Eventually it dried out and it became yellow and then it became dust, and such is life. We started young, we mature, and then we become old and feet. Just like that. But the ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ All these five or six things could be in the last day, could bring severe punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if, if they were used to, to destiny you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to push you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to push you away from the worship in Allah, being grateful and content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or forgiveness and pleasure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he ended the ayah by saying, وَمَتْ حَيَاتُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ that the life of this world is nothing but delusion, delusion. This is really, it. this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinks of life. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also, they said one time he was in a marketplace and he passed by a dead goat. And he wanted also to teach the companions about one of the parables, give them one of the examples about the life of this world. He saw a dead goat. And so he said to the companions, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how much would you pay for this dead goat? Why would anybody buy a dead goat? So they said that to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said, why would you buy a dead goat? And one of them said, Ya Rasulullah, even if it was alive, I would only pay a dirham because it has a defect. A dirham. Listen to what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. That the life of this world is less significant than this is to you. The life of this world, all the degrees, all the job titles, all the goals, all the achievements, all the things that we are consumed by, all the, things, all the things that we think about, all the things we do in this life, is less significant in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the dead cow. Subhanallah. So what do we do? Do we hate life? Should we shut it down? Is love in life haram? Is it haram to love dunya? There is no haram in love in dunya. Dunya is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a gift that is given to you by Allah. And the appropriate response to gift is to show gratitude. So dunya 
could be a means of being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yahya ibn Mu'ad, rahimahullah, Imam al-Razi, he said, how can I not love dunya? How can I not love dunya? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with substance, in this sustenance, in this life. This sustenance will help me to earn the ultimate pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Jannah of Allah. So he's saying that's all I got. And I will make sure, I will make sure that I use whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me in this life to be a means to achieve Jannah inshallah. It becomes a problem, brothers and sisters, when we make life the goal and not the means to the ultimate goal. When we think about nothing but dunya, when we chase dunya and fight for it and cry over it and hate for it and cause disturbance to other people because of it, that's when the love of the dunya becomes blameworthy. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, and listen to this carefully, مَنْ كَانَتِ الدُّنْيَا هَمَّهُ مَنْ كَانَتِ الدُّنْيَا هَمَّهُ Whoever is concerned about dunya, whoever is concerned about dunya, whoever is only concerned is dunya. He's thinking about nothing but dunya. جعل الله فقره بين عينيه. Allah subhanahu wa taala will place poverty right between his two eyes. He's not saying that he will be poor. No, he's actually rich, but he's worried so much, too much, that he's afraid to lose the wealth that he built. He's seeing it right in front of his own eyes all the time, and that you know. It, it, it prevents him from being charitable, it prevents him from being kind and gentle to other people, right? He's always worried, what if I give? Maybe one day I will lose all of it. He's worried about life. He's worried about becoming poor. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu says, and he will, dis, he will disorder his affairs or scatter his affairs. But if somebody who's worried too much about wealth, we're too much about losing that wealth. Of course, he'll be worried all the time. And that is the meaning of his affairs will be scattered. He will not be able to sleep at night because he worried too much about life. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at the end of this part, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he will get nothing from this life except what it was decreed to him. So chase him after it is not gonna really benefit us in any way. But the hadith doesn't stop here. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَنْ كَانَتِ الْآخِرَةُ هَمَّهُ But whoever is concerned is the hereafter. His concern is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. جَعَلَ اللَّهُ غِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ Allah will make richness in his heart. He's not going to give him money to be rich. But he will place the richness in his heart, which means he will be content. Content with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him. Because contentment, brothers and sisters, has nothing to do with quantity. It has nothing to do with how much I have. But it has a lot to do with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes Allah gives you less than somebody right next to you. He's in debt, and mashallah, you save and you give, and you, there's so much blessings in your salary that is smaller than the, your neighbor. This is rida. This is the result of rida. This is the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah will place richness in his heart, and he will gather his affairs. He put his head in the pillow at night, he falls asleep. He gets up in the morning with a smile in his face, not thinking about, what am I going to do? This problem, that, that, the other thing. No. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet وسلم, said, and truly, truly life will come to him. Life will come to him. Right? The love of this life, brothers and sisters, is so 
dangerous. It's so dangerous for us individuals. It's so dangerous also for our community. And the Prophet ﷺ pointed that out when he was with, sitting with the Sahaba and he was talking to them about prophecies, things that will happen in the future. The Prophet ﷺ attributed the humiliation of the Ummah to the disease of love in the dunya. He said وسلم, that the Ummah will gather around you and you'll be overwhelmed by their own power. They will humiliate you. They asked, Ya Rasulullah, is it because of our number? We're going to be small of number. That's why they will take advantage of us. He said, no. You will be big in number, but weak like phone. And when they asked about the reason, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, dunya. The love of this dunya. Mal faqru akhsha alaykum. It's not poverty that they fear for you. But I fear for you to compete with one another in this dunya. And it will destroy you. It will ruin you as it ruined people before you. It will ruin the hearts of people. People sometimes they ask, well, I pray five times a day. I fast, I give sadaqah, but I feel nothing in my heart. Your heart is filled with so many other things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why you, you get to empty the cup. It's like a vessel, you get to empty first to put something fresh and clean in. And Allah does not like partners. It's either him or something else. It's so dangerous in us, and I will give you a hadith, and I'm sorry to leave you with this hadith. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, two hungry wolves. Imagine two hungry wolves roaming around the flock of sheep are less destructive, listen, less destructive than what the love of this dunya and the love of wealth will do to the heart of the son of Adam. Can you imagine, you open the door to two big Predators, you know, you allow me in a sheep pen. Can you imagine how quick the killing and the slaughter will happen? Can you imagine the destruction that will happen? The love of dunya and the love of wealth will be quicker to, de to destroy our hearts in those two worlds. Again, brothers and sisters, this is not about disengaging from our, you know, worldly responsibilities and our admission and, and our goals and no no this is just trying to find a balance a balance between you know our external lives and our inner spiritual growth it's about learning to navigate you know the demand of our external lives while also feeding our spiritual side as well. There is a journey, and that journey is as important maybe, probably, for sure is more important than the journey, that the word, than the worldly journey, going to school and get a job and get married, and, and that is the journey in word. It's the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The life of this world will not break you until you give it, until you allow it. It will not break your heart. It will not get into your mind, wallahi, unless you give it the keys to your heart. So let us, inshallah, reclaim our hearts and our lives and give them to the rightful owner. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولاه اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما انفعنا اللهم زدنا علما اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and keep you all safe and healthy. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our minds and our hearts from this dunya. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are content with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the righteous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who will be acknowledged by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to be under his banner on the day of judgment and to drink from his blessed hand and from his blessed river in Jannah. Allahumma ameen. اللهم اجعل هذا الجمع جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا بيننا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم من ولي من أمر المسلمين أمرا فرفق بهم فرفق به ومن اشتد عليهم فاشبر عليه اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين يا صلى سبحانه وتعالى تبلس our brothers and sisters everywhere in every corner of this globe اللهم أمين ويا صلى سبحانه وتعالى to ease the pain and the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Gaza, in Palestine, in Sudan, and in every place in the world, Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to end their suffering, Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on those who passed away, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant shifa to those who are ill. قولوا قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة Allah Akbar. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين سابقوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة وجنة عرضها كعرض السماء والأرض يعدت للذين آمنوا بالله ورسله ذلك سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Just a quick reminder about the Sprouts event tonight. Inshallah, it's at 6:15 p.m. Please don't forget to register your children on the website. Also, wanted to mention that, Mashallah, yesterday was the first day for our new Director of Operations and Community Engagement, Brother Omar Ezzedin. He's standing in the back directing traffic. So when you pass by, say salam to him, and I'm sure he'll be happy to say salams to you as well, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.